Meek. I killed your career, what was left of DJ Academics Week hasn't been good. On May 14th, the well-known figure on the internet was sued for rape and defamation. Welcome back, it's your host Nancy Brown. If you are new here, make sure you have subscribed to our YouTube channel. He has vehemently refuted these accusations, but social media had already set him up for criticism and had placed a bullseye on his back. Meek Mill voiced his opinions on X, criticizing academics for reporting on musicians' inappropriate behavior while purportedly engaging in similar crimes. The straw that broke the camel's back was this. On his Twitch stream in the evening, Ak went all in on the Philadelphia rapper. When it came to Meek Mill, the internet celebrity did not hold back. If I see you at the top of the charts, trust me I'm having a bad day. In addition to saying Meek is washed up, he also acknowledged that he likes listening to the rapper's new album on repeat. I jack off to the fact that your career is six feet under. He goes as far as to say that he played a role in killing Meek's career. Your career ain't coming back? Drake killed it? The game killed it? DJ Academic stated that Meek Mill ought to have reconsidered disobeying him after bringing up a past instance in which the rapper had betrayed him 10 years prior. Any car you get, I could get. Any house you got, I could get. I chat shit all day. I talk about people business and I talk about my business. A serious lawsuit including accusations of rape, sexual assault, and defamation has been pending against DJ Academics. Former lover Fazi Azia bashes the accuser, and in her statement, she essentially details a disastrous night. On July 16, 2022, Abash says, she received an invitation to Axe House after they had not seen each other for over a year. She claims in the lawsuit that two of Axe pals drugged her, which is only one of the unsettling episodes described. She was reportedly raped by both of them, and DJ Academics woke her up around 4 in the morning. It also graphically describes what he was supposed to be doing, which was pulling her hair, prying open her legs, and brutally raping her. It appears that Academics is hinting that Blackburn is also Abash's representative. This is not some new shit, this is the shit that I first brought to light. Recall that there were other reports that surfaced critiquing him for the scandalous litigation he was utilizing. According to a Baller Alert report, the federal judge presiding over the proceedings alluded to his desire to embarrass defendants and garner media attention rather than pursue justice. I'm doing just regular journalism, I'm not looking into it like that. It appears that Academics is hinting that Blackburn is also Abash's representative. Went to the cops over a year and a half ago. He claims that the police have already looked into the situation and that he cooperated completely. Me and my lawyer were openly cooperative. Giving them his phone, surveillance footage, and other information. I was never arrested. It's documented. Academics was never arrested. There was a search warrant. Academics began. By the way, you know, some serious allegations. I don't care who's involved. We help the police. It's whatever you need. You want a phone? You want passcodes? Let's decrypt our DVR. You should see all the footage. There is nothing they did not see. You know what the result of that investigation was? Ruled by the DA that there is nothing there. Academics concluded, so I see a lot of people go act. There ain't no charges. There won't be no charges. And there's documentation to say, hey, we looked at everything. I was never arrested. It's document. On Twitter on Sunday, Freddie Gibbs criticized DJ Academics for being a rapist ass bitch in response to claims that the podcaster and two of his buddies had molested his former girlfriend. Woman, Zia Bashi, shared the narrative on Sede on Instagram Live following Academics' account of her going on a threesome with his pals. Let the disrespect be as loud as the disrespect, Gibbs wrote on social media. In more posts, he added, at Academics quiet as a church mouse today happy new year you rapist ass bitch, as well as ho ass, I am come to court and slap you. DJ Academics is facing a lot of criticism on the internet at the moment for what some are calling his disgusting actions. Furthermore, in an apparent recent interview for the Off The Record podcast, he discussed a wide range of topics pertaining to his complex relationship with women. Do you know this bitch stole half a million dollars from me? In particular, the well-known figure in the media asserted that his girlfriend had stolen 500k from him. Shit, nigga, I'm not checking the money all the time. I had money just sitting there. I in addition to a few additional counts of assault, and contradictory information regarding her criminal arrest. I'm shaming her now. I'm shaming her. An additional story involved a girl he was f***ing with who, while he was unconscious, was supposedly having a threesome at his residence with his pals. I said, yo, I'm gonna keep it a being with you, bro. DJ Academics remarked. You came to my house and had two niggas just fuck you raw. I ain't seen no condom, no none. I said to her, you should go get tested, bro. From that moment, she kept trying to pivot on the denial. Yo, nah, send me the video. Yo, I'm pretty sure I didn't fuck him. Now I'm, I'm getting super tight. Because I'm like, bro, I'm not about to watch this video if you getting fucked. It's on my surveillance camera. I look crazy right now, but I'm not going to stand here and let this man continue to lie about me. Then, a woman claiming to be the person DJ Academics was referring to appeared in a video that went viral on social media. That's not what happened, Academics. You know that that's not what happened. And, and for you to pretend like you didn't do anything. That I just went to your house and I'm just some thought. 
Like we didn't know each other for two years. You tried to save yourself after your friends assaulted me. Whether you got drunk or not. I know that when you woke up, you were on top of me too. You raped me too. A rape kit was done. You know what? I'm gonna come back with my own story. Furthermore, claims surfaced on the internet that the former host of Everyday Struggle was grooming minor females. At this time, all of these are just charges, some are purported direct messages, while others are testimony. Some refer to a video that appeared to show a woman screaming during his webcast, however it's unclear if this is authentic. Academics spent the entire weekend talking about Diddy. Ak is suspicious of the entire situation. For example, he dislikes the way Young Miami is currently moving. He thinks it's strange that she hasn't posted or said anything since the allegations were made public. Regarding Diddy, Academics is skeptical of some new images of the music mogul that have surfaced. Young Miami loudass ain't tweet in four days come on don't make it this obvious lol, Academics wrote. Subsequently, he talked about the Diddy images, saying no way Diddy staged them sad ass pics lol him in the media I know that shit cap ass f low. Bro settled the case though no need for them sad ass stage TMZ pics. If you recall, Diddy was hit with abuse allegations from the likes of Cassie. One day later, he opted to settle the lawsuit. There is a lot of commentary around the situation as many try to make sense of what is coming out. The serious allegations swept through social media. Many public figures have publicly supported Cassie, while many others have remained silent. Diddy's legal team denied everything, but there were allegations that Diddy offered Cassie $8 million in exchange for her silence. However, the settlement was announced on a Friday evening, with neither party disclosing any details about the terms of the agreement. Cassie, whose full name is Cassandra Ventura, issued a statement expressing her desire to settle the dispute amicably. I have decided to resolve this matter amicably on terms that I have some level of control. I want to thank my family, fans, and lawyers for their unwavering support. Similarly, Sean Combs offered a brief statement, saying, We have decided to resolve this matter amicably. I wish Cassie and her family all the best. Love. The swift resolution of this high-profile case leaves many questions unanswered, as the terms of the settlement are kept private. The outcome avoids a legal battle for both parties while leaving the public to consider the broader implications of such allegations in the entertainment industry. Furthermore, settling it quickly is the better option for Combs if avoiding a trial is the goal. A trial would require the public disclosure of evidence, which could harm his public image. Cassie accomplished what she wanted, she got to tell her story and now she's added a layer of protection. One user commented on social media. He can't do anything to harm her without all of us looking directly at him. Cassie and Diddy settled that faster than an episode of SVU. Diddy didn't want anything else to come out. It must have been real bad but Cassie started a catalyst. That trigger warning on that 35-page court document sealed the deal. This is not the last we gone here about him. Another person said, More information or discussion about this will almost certainly emerge in the coming days and weeks. On that note, keep checking back for the most recent Diddy news and updates. That's it for today, thanks for watching. Tell us what you think in the comment section and most importantly subscribe. See you.